Welcome to It's Character Building. I'm Andrew, that's Tom, and we are 50% of the Nerd Theorists. Last time we talked about rogues and how we'd build them. This week we are talking uh, about clerics. I've been really looking how... forward to this, I must admit. Yeah, me too. It's not a class that I've sort of built many times, or I think I played it for a couple of sessions in a previous campaign that me and Tom were in. Um, but yeah, not not sort of delve too deep into it until I've made this build. So, Tom, if you'd like to take us away with your Absolutely. Build. So, starting as always with race. Now, I've gone for a Warforged. Now, I know anybody oh. who likes to kind of watch Critical Role, for example, will automatically start thinking of Fresh Cut Grass being a Warforged Cleric, mm -hmm. but I've gone for a very different way of going about it, and a very incredibly different way of role-playing that character. I mean, I mean for, let's, for starters, I mean, Warforged itself, um, I mean, you, you get your sentries rest for straight off the bat. I mean, yes, it's it's only six hours for a long rest, but during those six hours, you still remain alert and you can still take watch uh, mm -hmm. during a, a night's rest and such. So always very useful to have a Warforged mm -hmm. in your party. And uh, your kind of constructed resilience, you, you have uh, advantage on saving throws to being poisoned and resistance to poison damage. You don't need to eat, drink, or even breathe, so you can just completely walk on the bottom of the ocean if, if you really wanted to. Um, so all the kind of uh, benefits uh, of being an artificial life form as such. Mm. And the integrated protection, you automatically gain plus one to your armor class, which for a cleric, which you generally get good armor anyway, is always a really good bonus. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice choice. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. Um, and as part of being that as well, you get specialized design, which you gain uh, one skill proficiency and one tool proficiency as part of being uh, a warforged. So I've gone for intimidation and a leather workers tools. Now, different. Yeah, I know exactly. So I mean, I'll go into why I've chosen these uh, as part of the class creation. So cleric, as is very different to a lot of the classes, is you get your subclass straight off the bat at level one. So my divine domain i've gone for the death domain now i've gone for this because of the way i kind of wanted to to portray the character is being very fascinated with death being a creature that does not die effectively so being a cleric as well so you'd be happily hang around these fleshy creatures and be very fascinated in all the many wonderful ways they can actually die and you can always bring them back and then watch them die again and you can bring them back and watch them die again <laughs> and i and i thought oh this would be a wonderful really creepy horrible character to play and especially as, <laughs> as a robot as well yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. I love, yeah, I love <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was like, as part of the death domain, um, some of the uh, spells that you get as part of that is things like uh, false life, for example. And because you'd actually, it's it's for normal kind of necromancy spell. I mean, for every time I've used that spell with any other type of character, it's just never felt role-playing right I mean it's a false life but I am alive how is it a false life if I'm I have life but with this character I don't have life I can have a false life on me and I thought if I cast that I can have like these fleshy bits the more kind of um kind of um I, like are those kind of temporary hit points I gain, the more flesh yeah. I kind of gain across me, and then it kind of gets knocked off as I take the damage. And I thought oh, that'd be a really cool and creepy way of, of, of kind of portraying yeah. that spell in action. Very thematic, I like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah. So then, 
for part of um, the kind of level four ability score improvement, I've gone for Meta Magic Adept. Oh, right, okay. Which I know we've kind of discussed about feats previously, about what you'd probably take as a lot of spellcasters, and this for me is probably high on the list of feats to take. Um, purely because, I mean, even as a, a cleric, you can easily then twin spell a healing, or yeah. um, or even um, twin spell a, a, a lot. I was obviously you get you get a choice, and I, I've chosen the twin spell and a quickening spell, which are the two kind of natural choices I feel uh, for doing that. I mean, it's, it works a lot better because you only get two sorcery points, so it all works really well for those lower level spells. So naturally, as a cleric, your healing word works really well, but then. It works really well for uh, even your cantrips, like Toll the Dead, which is a very powerful cantrip. Um, you can you can twin it and do it twice, <laughs> you know, um, or even um, let's say bump it down to a bonus action and be able to um, do that there as well. And again, with kind of like Toll the Dead and any kind of these like Ray of Sickness, you can actually imagine a mechanical way of actually it manifesting or even you know some of them like um animate dead um you can be yeah. actually be animating the dead and actually be re really fascinated with it being um but one of the things um i thought as well you can also kind of vampiric touch as well um uh, which is always really good and one of the things that i really wanted to go with because uh, the more I kept building this character the more I was leaning towards kind of a maybe a uh, uh, kind of a neutral evil kind of character oh, okay like a, like a dark cleric yeah like a dark cleric yeah, yeah definitely because I mean it's like you, you got um blindness and deafness which mm -hmm. you can take to go on there you can do some horrible things with blindness and deafness yeah and then um with like a, a construct which is very much uh, fascinated with with death and you, you've got silence as well, so if you've got somebody, or you can go um, blindness, deafness, and um, dome of silence around you, an area of silence. So anything you're doing to this poor person or creature that you've you've managed to capture, nobody's gonna know. Um, so yeah, it yeah, I, that's just where my brain went with, with this build. Yeah, dark, dark places. <laughs> yeah, my, my brain went I, in some yeah. very very dark yeah. places with this. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and um, I think with with the way that kind of the natural abilities of a cleric with things like destroy undead um, would be very much that kind of a I'm not that interested because you're already dead. I want living things and see them die, or how will they die? But yeah, so it was that kind of way of kind of justifying those kind of natural uh, cleric abilities. Um, yeah, and then on to kind of the level eight ability score improvement, which yeah. um, very much like um, my rogue build last time. I went for skill expert is just a very very handy one to have, no matter what kind mm. of build you're doing. Um, so you get your one ability score increase, uh, which I went for wisdom, and you get a proficiency That's and an expertise, which I actually went for perception in both. So automatically again in proficiency yeah. and expertise in perception, particularly handy with a warforged because uh, of that kind of sentry's rest. So you can spend the entire night uh, getting your long rest and being keeping watch for the entire night, which is amazing. There's, there's something about a robot with high perception which feels on theme as well. I don't know what it is. Maybe yeah, just um, being able to detect, <laughs> detect movements, yes. small, small objects moving and stuff. Yeah, mm, yeah it yeah. feels on theme, I think. Cool. Yeah, I like Good, because it's the way I was going. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so, we're again, on to ability scores. Um, as we did last time, we're going to be using the standard array. Uh, for this, I went um, with my We'll start low to high this time. Um, my dump stat was Charisma. I wasn't looking to make friends with this build at no. all. <laughs> charisma doesn't, was my dump it stat. It doesn't sound like <laughs> you would, would, would I just imagine being this really creepy, um, 
I'd, I'd probably put on a really creepy voice for it as well. But yeah, I don't know. I've not, I've not actually worked out that out yet, but I also sort of practiced it. But anyway, the, um, then I went on for my 10. I put into dexterity. Uh, again, not too. Um, I wasn't too interested with the way it was built. I know, again, a lot of people would probably be shouting, but dexterity is a great one to always have, no matter what um, what build you're doing, because of the extra bonuses, especially for initiative, but and um, for, for avoiding things like fireballs and things like that. So, um, but that's the way I went for it. Um, the next on the list was intelligence at my twelve. Um, Yes, yeah, just because for, for that kind of build, I wanted to be kind of reasonably intelligent to be able to kind of take everything uh, on board. Um, and then kind of, then constitution as my 13. Always good to have um, a decent amount of constitution for a cleric, um, no matter what kind of, kind of build you're doing. Um, then strength as 14 and my wisdom as 15. Strength 14. Yeah, strength 14. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is it. I mean, I, the kind of cleric doesn't mind getting in hands first, basically. Uh, doesn't mind doing the killing. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. So, that kind of um, creepy warforged. And if it does want to kind of grab somebody and drag them off, they've got a reasonable amount of strength to be able to do that. Yes. So, <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. Um,. Yeah. So, then, moving on to background. So, with the background, I just chose Outlander for this one. So, makes uh, sense. yeah, I mean, it was, makes sense. It wasn't going to be somebody, uh, it's, they say it's incredibly low charisma, uh, not somebody who's generally good around people, fascinated with people, but not good around them. So, Outlander was a natural kind of fit. Uh, you do get a tool proficiency, um, which I picked Lyre as a musical instrument, just why not? Um, which actually brings me around to um, when I was picking race, I picked leatherworking tools as a proficiency, which makes it even creepier when you, we, we now know the kind of character I was going to go with. It's like leather made from anyone and anything I can lay my hands on. So, yeah. <laughs> That was just the way, kind of creepy way I was <laughs> heading. Visiting this Warforged robot, just spliced with and covered with exactly. Things Especially when it's, if I'm putting false life on me, I can actually start putting some of my own skin that I've collected on there as well. It'd be great. Um, I could, yeah, that, that's a good point. I could just make myself a nice skin out of things I've found. Um, <laughs> Dark. Mm. Dark. Um, but yeah, Outlander also gets um, automatic skill proficiencies in athletics and survival. You don't get a choice about that, that's just what you get given. But yeah, I went a very dark place with this cleric. I'm sorry, that that's just, yeah, that's just the way I went, and I, I hope you liked it. Jeffrey Dahmer, the cleric war forged. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, lo I do love it though I love it Good. it's very thematic I feel like I'm not sure it's one I'd like to play myself but I would uh, definitely like to have I would in really party. oddly really enjoy playing it <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd want I'd want to experience that being in my party because yeah. I feel one day we, we might do <laughs> that's very um, very different to any cleric I've, I've come across before so go ahead what's what's your cleric then okay so a race I was um, going between two races uh, hmm. I like critical role as a lot of people and obviously the Firbolg from campaign 2 was a fan favourite but I stumbled across something called a Kalashtar which just hmm. seemed amazing now, its ability scores, um, its main one is plus two to wisdom, so that helps. But it's all the other stuff that it's got, which seems just really, really good. So, it's what... got a plus one in charisma as well. So I don't mean to interrupt you. I don't know a clash star. What, what, uh, what's it look like? I believe they're human. The look of them is uh, very human. And all right. They're, they described as a compound people created from the union of humanity 
and renegade spirits from the plane of dreams. Wow, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of, it seems to be a lot of sort of telep telekinesis, telepathic um, abilities that, right. that come from that, that plane of dreams. So you could uh, role play and build this character sort of with that in mind and, and I feel like there's some crazy stuff you could come up with. But the ability, from a, an ability point of view, it makes them really strong, it seems, because they also get advantage on all wisdom saving throws. Nice. Mental. Uh, you have uh, an ability called Mental Discipline, which gives you resistance to psychic damage, which is one that you don't seem to tend to get a lot of resistances to. So that, sure. that seems very good as well. The opposite um, barbarian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the one thing that the that totem barbarian can't resist. <laughs> so you could make one of these, a eh, totem barbarian, which sorry, oh, yeah. don't know they. Yeah. Um, it's also got a thing called mind link, so you can speak telepathically to any creature you can see, provided the creature is within a number of feet equal to ten times your level. You don't need to share a language with a creature for it to understand your telepathic utterances but the creature must be able to understand at least one language so that just seemed really good for communicating saying things to your party whilst you're in an rp sort of situation with someone that you maybe don't want to, to hear that that stuff and what's also great is along with that trait you can also use an action to give a creature that you can see the ability to speak telepathically back to you for an hour so gives you and a gap one of the people from your party the ability to communicate telepathically which could lead to some really good role play stuff and help in role play situations that's, that's pretty amazing did you, did you mention yeah. a range yeah. on that sorry uh so the range on it is it's, it's a creature that you can see in it has to be within a number of feet equal to 10 times your level so it, it oh. gets exponential with how you level up so yeah within 10 feet to begin with and then only gets better from there really um it's also got a another ability which i don't know how relevant it'll be may come up um in a campaign may not but they when they when a kalashtar sleeps they don't connect um to the plane of dreams as other creatures do instead their minds draw from the memories of their otherworldly spirit that that they've connected with oh that's cool so it, it makes them immune to spells and magical effects that require you to dream, like the dream spell, but not spells and other magical effects that make you sleep. I've and plenty you of get... times I've, I've had a yeah. hag invade dreams. Mm. Plenty yeah. of times. Yeah. Um, so, and you get a language choice, which I think that's... I always think with that, it's one that you probably need to speak to your DM, find out about what's going on in the campaign, what what language might be useful, because there's a whole host of them, and or it's something that you could put into your backstory about why you, you learn it. Yeah, so that's my race. Um, the class that I cho chose, and with the divine the, the main, um, sort of being the first level choice, I went with a twilight domain. Um, okay. Which, which has seemingly got some pretty mental abilities. So you got some cool, um, cool domain spells: fairy fire and sleep uh, at first level, moonbeam, see a bit invisibility, uh, aura of vitality, Leonin's tiny hut, aura of life, greater invisibility, circle of power, and mislead. So really good ones in there. Some really useful choices. Tiny hut's always a great choice to have in your Yeah, I, I really like tiny hut. Mm. I really like tiny hut. It's just good for when you're like um, out and about, can't find a, a safe shelter, so cast that. There you go. Get proficiency with heavy armor. It's always nice. Martial weapons and heavy armor. It's always good for a cleric. But here's, I think, one of the most powerful abilities it, it seemingly gets. So, it, it, you, it's called Eyes of Night, and it's, it's essentially so you can see through the deepest gloom. So it gives you dark vision out to a range of 300 feet. What? I've n uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I, uh, I have never seen anything that gives I thought that, the Owlin's 120 yeah. was amazing. but <laughs> Yeah, we thought that was a lot, but this is uh, next level. Crazy. And it says, in that radius, you can see dim light as if it was bright light, and mm. in darkness, as if you're in dim light. But also, along with that, so not just the 300 feet of, of dark vision, 
as an action, you can magically share that dark vision of this feature with willing creatures you can see within 10 feet of you. Up to, a number, I know, up to a number of creatures equal to your wisdom modifier. Minimum of one. That, um, that dark vision lasts for an hour, and once you share it, you can't do so until you finish a long rest. But that is an hour of dark vision for four, three, four, five other creatures in your pie. It's it's crazy. It's, That's a massive yeah. range as well. But for, for yeah, everybody yeah. in the group, it yeah, gives three or four people 300 feet of dark vision. There you go. Never needing to worry about seeing in the dark yet. <laughs> also, get something called Vigilant Blessing, which this this seems very good as well. It's, it's I feel like this this class is very support based. There's lots of really cool support abilities that you can be using to help out your party, um, which leads me on to this next feature so it's called vigilant blessing and it, as an action you can give one creature you touch including yourself advantage on the next initiative roll that creature makes so wow. give them initiative yeah. so if you know you're about to go into combat that's great yeah. yeah 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 and i think there doesn't seem to be any sort of like um end to it it says just the, the benefit thing. ends uh, the benefit ends immediate, immediately after the roll, or if you use the feature again. So I oh. feel like you could, you could just grant whoever when you start like a day or uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah about about to go into a dungeon or a cave or something it's like. So it doesn't have to be just immediately be... before. No, so it no. doesn't matter if you're been no. surprised by an attack. Yeah. You, you're automatically yeah. getting advantage. That's you pretty could, amazing. You could always just give yourself it and then if you think oh, I don't need to go first I'll give it to the rogue or mm. the the fighter the paladin something like that yeah cool the channel divinity obviously you get turn of dead but they also have one called twilight sanctuary which I like this as well again it's another very supporty um, ability so as an action you present your holy symbol blah 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 a sphere of twilight emanates from you and various centers on you has a 30 foot raid Raid, uh, 30 foot radius. The sphere moves with you and it lasts for a minute or until you are uh, incapacitated. And whenever a creature, including you, ends its turn within the sphere, you can grant it one of these two benefits. So you can grant it temporary hit points equal to 1d6 plus your cleric level, which that seems nuts. 1d6 plus your cleric level. So yeah. get, get to 20. An anywhere up to 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nuts. And then you can also choose to end one effect on it, causing it to be charmed or frightened. So, oh. yeah, that seems incredibly useful as well. Yeah, that's amazing. That, yeah, that, that's at the that's at the second level of that when you get your channel divinity. But yeah, seems really useful. So fourth level, I then I know you mentioned meta magic adept, which I do really like, um, and I possibly. It'd probably be a 50-50 toss-up between that and the one that I actually chose for it. But because it was support-based, and I think a lot of the spells I've chosen are concentration-based, I actually went for Warcaster. But picking the Warcaster... That's a great choice for any caster. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like. Yeah, I do like it for any caster where you, you're going to have a few sort of concentration um, spells. It, or and, even and, just for the ability to do um, a spell as your reaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah is it's amazing. one that... Yeah, it's the one bit of it that I always sort of forget about, but it is, it's really great. Yeah, so it's to anybody who doesn't know, it gives you advantage on constitution saving throws you make to maintain your concentration on a spell when you take damage. Um, but it also, when you provoke, when a hostile creature provokes an opportunity attack, instead of just being able to use an attack, you can use a spell um, as your reaction. So yeah, really useful, really useful that one. Sixth level Twilight Cleric gets a cool ability, which all their abilities seem to be cool abilities. Um, it says, as a bonus action when you are in dim light or darkness, you can magically give yourself a flying speed equal to your walking speed for one minute, and you can use you can use it as a bonus action, which is nice. So it frees up your action as well to cast a spell once you're in the air, uh, but it, you can use it equal to a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus um so you can regain them all in long rest so you got a few uses of that as well so that's that's really nice and then the ability score 
at level 8. I actually went for uh, Fey Touched. Um, Fey Touched for oh, this yeah. one. Uh, which is a half feat. So I gave myself uh, a boost to my wisdom. And also, I went with the Silvery Barb spell. Because right. it's that. Yeah, it, so. Uh, it's for those psychic who, damage, I believe. Yeah. It, it, well, it. You magically distract the triggering creature and turn its momentum, momentary uncertainty into a. Blah, blah, blah. That is a w mouthful. So basically, what you do, you make the creature re roll the d20 that they've just rolled. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So you can use use it as a reaction. Say someone gets a creature gets a natural 20 against one of your friends or against you. You can make them re roll it. Re roll it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Not the one I was thinking of, but more useful. No. Yeah. Yeah. It seems, seems very, very useful. Um, and then they get a cool. 8th level ability, which I'm not sure many classes do, but yeah, you get the ability to infuse your weapon strikes with divine energy. Uh, so once on each of your turns, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can cause it to deal extra 1d8 radiant damage. So a little bit of extra damage if you're uh, if you're in melee and, and hitting stuff. Um, this My spell choices, I went with a few like healing ones, like Cure Wounds and Healing Word to begin with. Uh, I put Whole Person in there, which I do like... Um, but it's, it's yeah, it's dependent on sort of what sort of enemies you're coming up against. If you're coming up against a lot more monsters and stuff, it's, it's mm. one that you may want to drop, take something else. Um, revivify, I always think it's it's as a cleric, get it in there. So it's a natural one to take, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then uh, banishment was a it's, which is another concentration spell, which always useful. It can just take a beast out of the fight, and it's charisma save as well, so which. Not a no, lot of not a lot of beasts or cr no. nasty creatures you're going to meet out there. You want to be high charisma, definitely not. No, so yeah, it always always seems like a good choice to me. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the class choices I made. Very much like a Twilight cleric, very much like a Twilight yeah, cleric. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so stand so for the abilities, I went with what did I go lowest? Lowest I took charisma. I think same as you. I uh, I put the eight there. You get a one from the Kalash star, but it doesn't take you into not having a negative yeah, one about it. Yeah. So deck I went with a ten as well because you're just not moving that. You're not a quick person as a cleric. I just don't feel. Hmm. I'm yet to see a quick cleric, someone that's high in decks. Again, uh, if you if you've made one and you think it really works yeah. well, let us know. Please let us know. Yeah, definitely. Please let us know. Yeah. Uh, intelligence is a 12. Um, yeah, there's, there wasn't. I could have maybe done that in Dex, but no. I like the intelligence skills. I like the investigation. It, it, it works well with, with a character in role playing yeah. sense as and, well. So yeah. Yeah. Plus, yeah, they're all about the mind abilities, telekinesic. Mm. I feel like they would be a little bit cleverer than your average. Um, Strength, I took a 13, mm -hmm. and that is mainly down to the heavy armor requirement. Um, because when I initially did it, I think I put strength as a dump stat and then realized I would lose 10 foot of movement while wearing heavy armor. Yes. I was like, can't do that. Constitution, 14. Nice for health. And Wisdom, took the 15. Naturally, I mean, it's, it's the, yeah. uh, the, the spot the casting ability, yeah. isn't it? For, go to for yeah. Eric. Yeah, so no groundbreaking revolutionary choices there. No, um, nothing out of the ordinary. Yep. No, nothing out of the ordinary. It's almost identical then, to mine, to be fair. Yeah, it, mm. yeah. There's a lot of similarities there. I think the, the charisma, the deck, definitely the lowest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went with a bar traveller because I, I mm. feel like a Kalashtar would sort of, if they're dead telepathically communicating have this spiritual connection yeah. and plus it, it, it that's gives you like a spiritual traveller type yeah, and it gives you a per skill proficiency in perception oh very nice yeah, yeah. Uh, I took I took nature as the other selection oh you get a choice very nice yeah so you get per perception as a given and you get to choose um, and the choices are quite vast for that one so I yeah Went to nature. I could have take could take investigation there. Yeah. Mm. Um. 
and tool proficiency, I took a war gong. Just because it sounded cool. <laughs> a war gong. A war well, gong. Yeah, yeah, just imagine you're constantly just wheeling around a gong, just going bong. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> As oh, I heal people. I'm going to have to have a bard with a gong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gong. but that's that's the uh, that's my cleric. That's amazing. Though some yeah. of those abilities, especially having yeah. um, your racial abilities for starters, all those kind of psychic abilities and be able to grant yeah. them to other people. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it, it feels like it leans into a more support sort of class. Yeah, like, you're yeah. not going to be doing crazy amounts of damage or anything, but you can really... Well, your class supports yeah. you in combat quite mm. a lot. But yeah. then your racial abilities can support you in RP sense. It's yeah. like supporting yeah. all over the place. So yeah, that's, that sounds absolutely amazing. But yeah, and some of those Twilight Cleric abilities yeah. are nuts. Seems nutty. Seems really nutty. And it's... Um, the, the crazy thing is, it's stuff that... Like, all that stuff that I was reading through there, most of it is first level stuff, like the Eyes of Night, the 300 foot dark vision, and the, mm. the Vigilant Blessing giving someone advantage on... Um, initiative that's all first level so <laughs> from a very much a power gamer point of view if someone was wanting to multi-class dip into a, cla a, a cleric yeah it's a it's a very very good choice yeah i i could see i could see a lot of people from that stance doing that oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. without a doubt now that yeah. was fantastic thank you very much yeah um, yeah, enjoyed that. Again, I, I, another character you would love to have in your party, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, it's one. I, it's one I'd like to. Uh, one I definitely like to play. And I think it would be it would be different for, for me because I'd be more supporty than going for straight straight damage, getting those numbers. Yeah, I've not seen you go damage. for a support roll yet. So. No. But, no. But, so I think. Uh, that'd be yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> different to what I usually play. Yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. So, well, enjoy that. I hope anybody watching has enjoyed mm. our choices too. And again, yeah. let us know what you think down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe because next time out we're going to be doing warlocks. We want we after doing this one we've got a taste for a caster. So we were thinking doing a warlock next. So keep an eye out for that next time. But until then, take care.